Welcome to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. Uh, in this video, I'm going to discuss all the variations of multiplication problems that you'll see in the math computation section of the test of adult basic education, that is the tape test. Okay? Um, so, as I discussed in a previous video, the math computation section of the tape requires you to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Uh, including with fractions and decimals. Um, to do well on this section of the tape, you have to be very comfortable with multiplication. So the purpose of this video is to introduce you to all the variations of multiplication that you'll see and then build on that in later lessons that I'll be posting briefly. Um, so uh, first I just want to mention that there are four different cases uh, when it comes to multiplication in the tape test. Uh, the first of which requires you to multiply single digits by single digits, like 5 times 4. Um, the second case involve, uh, requires you to be able to multiply double digits by single digits, like uh, 10 times 3 or 15 times 7. The third case requires you to be able to multiply double digits and triple digits by double digits. So for example, um, that would be like 57 times 57 or 230 times 57. And the fourth case requires you to be able to uh, use the science chart to multiply positive and negative numbers together. Okay. In addition to those four cases, you also have to uh, memorize what you do when you multiply a whole number by zero and a whole number by one. Okay. So let's start with what you do when you multiply whole numbers by zero and one, since those are the easiest cases to work with. Um, whenever you multiply any number, including negative numbers, by zero, the product is always going to be zero. So zero times five is going to be zero. Zero times 16 is going to be zero. Negative 55 times zero is going to be zero. And zero times 1,000 is going to be zero. Okay? Again, anything times zero is zero. So if I had a billion... and I multiplied it by zero results going to be zero. Okay. Uh, similarly, whenever you multiply any number, including negative numbers, by positive one, the product of those two numbers will always be that number. So one times five is going to be that number five. One times sixteen is always going to be sixteen. One times negative one hundred is going to be that number, negative one hundred. And one times fifteen hundred and two is always going to be fifteen hundred and two. One times negative 1 billion, of course, will be negative 1 billion. And anything times positive 1 is just going to be that number. Okay? So moving on to case 1, um, this is multiplying uh, single digits by single digits. Um, if you think back to elementary school, you were taught how to do this uh, by using the uh, multiplication table. Um, this is something that it's worthwhile to commit to memory if you haven't done so already. Uh, this will improve your ability to do well on any standardized test dramatically. Okay, So I'm just going to go through this in case you forgot how to do it. Um, let's say we have the problem 8 times 5. You know this table, um, you would know this answer right away, but let's assume you didn't know this table. You would use this column and this row to find either of these two. So I'm going to find the 5 in the column, which is right there. And I'm going to find 8 in the top row. And where these two numbers intersect is where the answer is. So they intersect right here at 40. So we know the answer is 40. Um, so let's do another one. Let's do an unusual one. Let's do, um, let's do 11 times 9. Again, find the two numbers in the column and row. It doesn't matter if you find one here or one here, as long as you find them separately. So let's find the 11 here and the 9 here. Let's find where they intersect. You can see they intersect there. 
So this is going to be 99. Okay. Um, let's do a smaller one. Let's do let's do uh, six times four. Okay. Let's find the four in the top row and the six in the side column here. Let's find where they intersect. They intersect right there at 24. Okay. That's how you multiply a single digit by a single digit. It behooves you again to memorize this chart if you haven't done so already. Um, case two, as I mentioned, involves multiplying double digits by single digits. Um, it's fairly straightforward as to how you do this. Let's say you had 36 times 7. Your first step would be to multiply 6 by 7, which would be 42. You write the 2 right here, and you carry the 4 to above the 3. And then you would say 7 times 3 is 21. Add your 4, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. You write that to the right of the 2. Okay? And that works the same way for every two-digit number you multiply by a single-digit number. Let's try another one. Let's do 30 times 5. Uh, 5 times 0, of course, is 0. 5 times 3 is 15. Okay, let's try one more. Let's do 21 times 4. And we start here. 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Okay. Uh, case 3, as I mentioned, involves multiplying double digits and triple digits by double digits. So let's work out a problem. Let's do 36 times 17. So uh, we start with this 7 and multiply it to both digits in the top. 6 times 7 is 42. Carrier 4. 7 times 3 is 21. Plus 4 is 200 and, or 25. Now, here's the trick with when you move on to the second digit, namely 1 in this case. You have to drop down a 0 placeholder right here. Okay? So 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. Now you add these two together. Uh, 2 plus 0 is 2. 5 plus 6 is 11. Carry the 1. 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 1 is 6. Again, if you haven't done this in a while, you may have forgotten to add this 0 there. So let's try another one. Let's do uh, 36 times... Let's do 360 times 17. Okay. Um, so this works the same way. 7 times 0 is 0. 7 times 6 is 42. Carry the 4. 7 times 3 is 21 plus 4 is 25. Again, we're moving to this number, so we get to add a 0 placeholder. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. Add. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. 5 plus 6 is 11. Carry the 1. Uh, 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 is 6. Okay, let's try one more. Let's do 360 times 170. This is a triple digit number multiplied by a triple digit number. It works the same way. We're just going to have a third row. So let's see what that looks like. 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 6 is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. We're starting this second number, so we drop down one zero before we get started. 7 times 0 is 0. 7 times 6 is 42. Carry the 4. 7 times 3 is 21. Add 4, that's 25. Okay. We're starting the third number, so we drop down two zeros. Okay. Now we can get started. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. Let's go ahead and add these numbers up. 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. Uh, 0 plus 2 plus 0 is 2. 
5 plus 6 is 11, carry the 1. Uh, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 1 is 6. Okay? So again, when you're multiplying two digits, when you get to the second digit, you have to add a 0 in. When you're multiplying a three digit number by a three digit number, when you get to the first or the second digit, you add a zero. When you get to the third digit, you add two zeros. Okay? So let's talk about the signs chart. Um, this is how you read the signs chart, and it works for multiplication as well as division. A positive number times a positive number results in a positive number positive number times a negative number results in a negative number positive number times a positive a, ne a negative number times a positive number results in a negative number and a negative number times a negative number results in a positive number so let's work out a case of each so let's do 5 times 2 we can see we have a positive number times a positive number it's going to result in a positive 10 let's do for this case let's do uh, 6 times negative 3. Again, we have a positive 6 times a negative 3. We know the result's going to be negative 18. For this one, let's do negative 3 times 5. Again, negative times a positive is going to give us a negative, negative 15 in this case. And uh, let's do a negative 2 times a negative 3 for this one. Again, negative times a negative is going to result in a positive. Negative 2 times negative 3 is going to result in a positive 6. Okay? So, in essence, um, that's all you're going to see on the math computation section of the table in terms of multiplication. Um, as long as you're comfortable doing all those different variations, you should do fairly well on this section. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, this lesson is kind of a uh, foundational lesson. Um, without these tools, you can't do uh, more advanced multiplication problems. So this is the first building block in your foundation. So uh, for many of you, this would have been extremely easy. That's great if it is. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to post more videos where I start ramping up uh, the difficulty of these problems. So. Uh, that said, uh, feel free to leave some comments in the comment section below, uh, but on that note, I'll go ahead and cut you loose.